So we know that the potential difference is related to the electric field through the equation delta V is equal to negative the integral of E dot dS. So we can use this to work out the electrical potential, the voltage around a point charge. So we already know how to describe the electric field around a point charge. So if we imagine the electric field around this point charge plus Q here, then we can write the equation that the electric field E is equal to KQ divided by R squared times R hat, where R hat is the radial unit vector. So it contributes the direction, which is out from our point charge, but no magnitude to this expression. So let's now consider how we can calculate the potential difference, the voltage difference between two points. Let's choose A at radius Ra, which is quite close to the charge, and then B at radius Rb, which is slightly further away. Now, we'll want to move from A to B, but this is a little bit complicated. So let's simplify it and imagine point B dash, which is along the same um, radial line out from Q as A. Now, if we imagine moving between B dash and B, we're moving along a tangent to that radial field. So the electric field is always perpendicular to the direction we're moving. And so if we calculate the electrostatic work it takes to move between B dash and B, that is just going to be equal to zero because the work is equal to the force with the dot product of the displacement, take the integral of that, and in this case the force is um, just EQ, the electric field times the charge, and so because those are perpendicular, that dot product ends up giving us zero for that electrostatic work. So because there is zero electrostatic work to move from B dash to B, that tells us that these two must be at the same voltage as the change in potential is equal to minus the electrostatic work divided by Q. And so if we're finding out the voltage between A and B, that will be exactly the same as the voltage between A and B prime. So let's now use our equations to work out the potential difference between A and B prime and hence between A and B. So the change in voltage is equal to negative the integral of E dot dS. Now, in this case, we can put the limits on our integral. We're going from our radius Ra to radius Rb, because B dash is also at radius B. And then the electric field, well, that's given by KQ on R squared times R hat. And then we take the dot product with the displacement and in this case we're moving radially so that displacement is in the r direction so we can write that as dr. So just looking at that little dot product part we've got r hat dot dr because those are parallel to each other and r hat is a unit vector this is just equal to dr. So we can write our integral as minus kq and then we've got our integral from Ra to Rb, and we've got, this is the integral of dr on R squared, so now we can do the integral, and that's equal to minus kq, and then we've got our brackets, and it's negative 1 on R, and we've got Ra down the bottom and Rb at the top, so when we substitute that in, the negative signs will cancel out, and we end up with, this is equal to kq times brackets, 1 on Rb minus 1 on Ra, and if we want, we can rearrange this and write this as this is equal to KQ RA minus RB over RA times RB. So this is going to be negative because radius A is smaller than radius B. We're moving outwards. Now, this is in fact what we expect because we've said that positive particles move from a higher potential to a lower potential. So we'd expect the potential at B to be lower than the potential at A, and hence the change in potential, which is the potential at B minus the potential at A, should be negative, which is what we got in this result. So we've seen how we can calculate the potential difference, the voltage between two points. And physically, when we're measuring voltage, we are in fact always measuring the potential difference between two points. However, it would be really useful if we had some expression and we could describe, say, the voltage at point A. 
And in order to do that, what we're actually going to need to do is to define a zero point. So just like with potential energy, we're going to define our zero point for voltage as an infinite distance away from the charge which is causing the electric field. So we'll say that at radius r equals infinity, the voltage is given by zero, so V equals zero. So if we want to measure the voltage at point A, what we're going to need to do is consider moving a charge from an infinite distance away to our point at radius r a. So in this case, we can write well the potential difference that is equal to the final potential minus the initial potential, which is equal to the potential at radius a minus the potential at the infinite radius, which we know is zero. And then looking at our working from before, you can see it's going to be exactly the same, except that now our initial position, so our lower limit on the integral is going to be infinity, while our final position is going to be radius r a. So just replacing those limits, you can see that this is going to be equal to minus kq times brackets minus 1 on r, and we're going from infinity to r a, and substituting that in, negatives cancel, and we end up with that's equal to kq 1 on r a minus 1 on infinity. And 1 on infinity is just equal to 0. So this has given us an expression for the voltage at radius r a, which is that it's equal to kq on r a. So this is actually generalizable to any radius r when we're considering the potential around a point charge. So we can write v r is equal to kq on r. And just remember that k, Coulomb's constant, is also equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So we can also write this as this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q on r. Now this was for a point charge, but a sphere of charge has exactly the same electric field as a point charge. We showed that using Gauss's law. So this potential expression actually works as well if we're considering a sphere of charge and working out the potential at different radii from the center of that sphere of charge, as long as we take radiuses which are greater than the sphere itself.